Hello, English 11 students, and welcome to the video for quarter three, week seven, day two. This video is designed for those students who are absent from our live Zoom class. As a reminder, everything you say, do, or type is recorded, so please keep it school appropriate. And as always, there is no saving, downloading, or taking pictures of our class ever. Our agenda for today. I'm going to review how to use uh, performance matters in preparation for next week's progress check. That's on day one of the next week. We're going to view a practice test, and then we're going to preview the actual test prompt. And I'm going to give you some tips and strategies for doing well on that progress check. Uh, as a reminder, if you have not already turned in your op-ed final draft, please do that as soon as possible. All right, let's get started. So if you go to the uh, English 11B homepage and you click on the resources folder in the lower left corner of your screen, right, it looks like this. Um, you should see an item that popped up that says PM login students, right? You're gonna go ahead and click on that and you should come to a screen that looks like this that asks you to sign in. Okay, so let's explore what performance matters looks like. Many of you have already used this before to, to, to take a test, but just to make sure that we're all on the same page, we'll do this. All right, there's three ways to open performance matters, but the easiest one is the one that we just went over from my uh, MCPS classroom or from Canvas. Right, click on the resources tab and go to the button that says PM login students. Once you log in, you need to put in your student ID at MCPS md.org don't use the net email address or uh, yeah that's the one that uh, kind of messes us up it has to be org for this program okay and then type in your mcps issued password just like you normally would once you do that you'll come to a screen that looks something very similar to this you know this one says english 10 quarter 2 progress check but ignore that right this may be blank at first so we get the appropriate test to come up. I'll be working with you on that day. Okay, your start page, right? When you are using um, the this, when you're using this program, the only way that you can move forward is to use like the next question button, right? Or the next button, or these buttons that are within the actual program. You don't wanna use any of those browser buttons, right? So, Give me one second, there we go. Um, once you hit uh, next from that previous screen, you'll get this pop-up that says uh, special instructions. Please make sure that you read that to yourself and then you would click the start test. Again, as a reminder, right? Do not use these arrows to move forward and backward. If you do that, you'll lose all of your work. The only arrows that you should be using to navigate are the ones within the program that say previous and next. While you're working, right, you have the option of using a, a highlighter tool, right? You would just click on that and then you can highlight any text that you want uh, to kind of annotate. If you wanna remove those highlights later, right, you just click this little uh, circular button and it'll remove those highlights for you as well. To make the screen larger, you would hit control and press the plus button towards the top of your keyboard, like you see here. Um, to zoom, to make it smaller, right, or to zoom out, you would hit control and the minus button. And then to reset the zoom back to its default, you would hit control and zero. Okay. So your test is a writing prompt, okay? There's no multiple choice, et cetera, but there is a, uh, a format to it. If you take a look here, right? The first thing at the top will be your directions. You wanna make sure you read all of those to yourselves. Then they give you suggested pacing, right? Where they say it should take you about 15 minutes to do this and then 35 to 45 minutes to do this, et cetera. You, this is just a suggested pacing guide, right? You can go a little faster than this. You might work a little slower than that. It's fine. And for those of you who need more than one class period to get this accomplished, there are ways to do that. Don't worry, your extended time accommodation is available to you. Um, we'll just talk about that when it comes up. You'll have a writing prompt underneath that, right? This is one that they're using in the sample, but I'm gonna show you what the writing prompt looks like uh, in a minute. And then it's, 
gives you the criterion for success, right? What do you need to do in order to get a good grade on this written response? Okay, so it'll always follow the same pattern. In this case, right, the, the pattern looks like this, right? The passage they would have you read, then there was the prompt, then you've got your, spon your uh, typing box down here where you can type your response, right? Put things in bold, capitalize letters, and all that other kind of stuff. Once you're finished with your response, you always make sure that you hit the green submit test button, right? That way that it saves your work. And that was basically just the quick run through of performance matters. I'm going to help people make sure that they understand these things again on the day of the progress check. Um, but just in case I wanted to kind of go over this stuff with people, if you have questions about this, please let me know. Um, it is also possible. I'm going to back up one second. Um, to use the Google Read and Write app to have the computer read this stuff to you, right? Which again might help you stick to that um, time frame of doing things quicker. Okay, so let's take a look at a simulation of the reading material and the writing prompt. I cannot show you the actual materials and the prompt ahead of time, right? However, I made a fake prompt that looks identical to the real one so that we can practice and strategize. It's not cheating, it's a strategy. So here's what your prompt will look like. Notice that I have kind of uh, put boxes over the actual name of the thing that you're working with. All right, it says read the prompt and the criteria for success in the box below, then read the passage blank, keeping the prompt in mind while you read. You can highlight words and phrases using the highlighter tool at the top of the page. You can also use scratch paper or a blank Google Doc to take notes and plan your writing. When you're ready, scroll down to the bottom of the page and type your response. The suggested pacing they're saying is take about 15 minutes to review the prompt, read the passage, and plan your response. Take about 35 to 40 minutes to write your paragraph, sorry, your multi-paragraph response and then take about five minutes to review your work, right? Look for spelling and capitalization errors and all that kind of stuff. The prompt it says, write a multi-paragraph argument in response to the provided passage. Your response may be an op-ed or may take another form of argumentative writing. Your response should address and respond to the arguments presented. Support your argument with evidence from the passage, your personal life, or observations of the world around you. Okay, so this is why we did the common task the way that we did, right? Because this writing prompt is exactly the same thing that I had you do about your, um, with your op-ed, right? Using one of those excerpts. So this is the simulation, right? I am using this um, argument about paying college athletes as my demonstration. This is not the actual one that you're going to get on the test, but this looks identical to how it will look. So let's take a look at this exactly. Right. The issue here is like paying college athletes, the top pros and cons, right? Pros means people who are for doing this, right? Who are saying that they are in support of paying college athletes and cons are the people who are against paying college athletes, right? Because they can think of reasons not to do it. This here is a reading passage that gives you the basic introduction to the argument and the basic introduction to the topic. So if you never knew anything about it, here's where all the basics are. Then underneath that, you will see a list of the top three pro reasons, right? Or the reasons that they should be paid. And then the top three reasons that people believe that they should not be paid. Okay, and these are your evidence that you can use in your response. Let's take a look at the requirements and the suggested strategy. The requirements for this assignment, right? You need two or more paragraphs. You need to make a clear statement of your position on the issue, right? You're either for or you're against, and you need to explore both sides of the issue. So some ways to do that, right? Suggested strategy. First, read all of the information given, right? I know it's a lot, but you can use the Google Read and Write app to make that a little easier. Choose a side. Once you've chosen a side, 
write a brief introduction paragraph, right? That's where you have your hook, you introduce the topic, and then you state your claim. That should be one paragraph. Then use one quote from your chosen side and explain the strength of this position, right? So for example, you might use this one right here from the pro side and then explain, you know, after you use this stuff as a quote, explain exactly why that is so convincing, right? Why that should be enough to convince someone that yes, they should pay college athletes. Use your own experience to bolster your quote, right? If you have a personal experience yourself with this topic because you know of a certain athlete or because you've read some other articles, et cetera, about that or heard about it in the news or through conversations with other people that you have, that can go in your essay as well. Then you want to choose a weak opposing argument, state it, and then refute it, right? Or basically knock it down, right? So you would take the other side's argument Say, you know, the other side thinks this, put that out there, and then completely rip it apart. Okay, again, this is a lot of information to read. So to make that go faster, you might want to try and use the Google Read and Write app on the program. All right. So the suggested strategy they have for you is to use the provided sentence starters to help you complete your written response in that 45 minute time frame, right? On the day of the progress check, you will have this available to you on um, Canvas, okay? It goes over the structure that you can use, right? And it's exactly the same thing that we did when we did your op-ed for the excerpts from the articles that we looked at. Right? You'll start off with a hook, right? Either ask a provocative question or create a mental scene for your reader that'll explore um, that topic throughout your op-ed. You're going to give the context and the summary, right? What's the whole debate about? You're going to choose a side, give your evidence, acknowledge the other side, and then knock them down, and then have a call to action, right? Something you want the reader to do with all that information. Let's take a look at what it would look like to fill all that out. Okay, so as you can see, right, I've got my stuff, right, the, about paying college athletes here. I've got all the evidence on the right, but let's talk about filling these in. First, for the hook, you'll have to write that on your own, but when you get to the context and the summary, right? If you have never heard about the controversy surrounding, use the actual title, right? If you've never heard about the controversy surrounding paying college athletes, insert that there. Here's a quick summary. One side of the argument believes blank because blank, right? All of that information is going to come from here, these paragraphs that give you the basic background information. The other side believes blank because of blank, right? Again, that all comes from this background. You wouldn't copy and paste every single word from here, right? Because that's a lot, but you would just very quickly summarize it or put it in your own words. The next thing you need to do is to choose a side, right? So I believe, insert the topic, right? Paying college athletes is a good slash bad thing because, right? You need to pick one of those two things and delete the other. Then add in your own personal reasons for choosing that side. Talk about something that you experienced personally or something you observed somewhere else that makes you feel the way that you do. Next is your evidence, right? One strong argument for or against, right? You will select this word depending on which one you went with, right? If you think it's a good idea, you're for it. If it's, you think it's a bad idea, you're against it. Then you want to pick, so like I said, pick one of those and then delete the other. Then add the strongest pro or the strongest con argument for your side. So in my example, I'm saying that I'm for paying college athletes. And the reason I'm going to use as my evidence is this one right here. I think the strongest one is uh, pro number two. So all of this, I'm not going to say pro number two, right? I'll actually just use what it says here, right? College athletes are risking their bodies, et cetera, et cetera, and all this information. Okay, so that's what would go in that blank. Now it's time to acknowledge the other side. Those who do not agree with my position may argue that blank, 
right? Filling in that blank. I want to use the other side's weakest argument. In my example, I think that this is their weakest argument, right? This one up here. So that's what I would be putting in there. Again, I don't have to use these exact words. I can just put it in my own words, okay? But then the more important part is this second half of the sentence. But this is a weak argument because, right? I want to explain how or why that argument is weak. Maybe I could use that. Sorry, maybe what I can do is use another quote from my pro side to also knock that idea down or that argument down. Okay. And then the last thing to do is to wrap things up by filling out the call to action space, right? I want you as the reader to blank, right? How do you want them to think differently, act differently, or do differently now that they have all this information and why? Once you've done that, you're all finished. A quick reminder, right? This is very helpful for structuring your, uh, your op-ed response, right? And your argument and response, but remember it needs to be two or more paragraphs. So don't lump all of this stuff together, break it up into separate paragraphs, just like you did on your common task op-ed. My quick suggestion, right, is these first three things, like the hook, the context, and then choosing a side, that should be one paragraph. Your evidence should be a separate paragraph, and then the acknowledge the other side and call to action can be your last paragraph. Okay, and that's everything that we covered in class today. That was a lot of information. If you need to go back and go over this, please rewatch the video, or you can attend student support from 745 to 845, and Ms. Deal and I would be happy to work with you. Again, if you haven't finished your op-ed final draft, please make sure that you turn that in as soon as possible. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in class soon.